Well, to say this is a big difference from a year ago would be an understatement. Um, last year, we were all able to meet at the Jewish Community Center in Boulder. Um, it wasn't possible this year, obviously, so we decided to host our first ever virtual expo and webinar series. My name is Al Manzi. I'm the president and CEO for Prairie Mountain Media, also the publisher at the camera, and your moderator for today's session. I'd like to welcome everyone to what is our sixth webinar in the series. This one's entitled Knee Health. It's the bee's knees, natural solutions for chronic knee pain. Before we get rolling, please notice that there's a Q&A and chat box on the bottom of your Zoom screen or your device screen. Please feel free to enter your questions in either box. Um, Dr. Holliman, Holliman will, will present for about 40 minutes today. So that'll give us about 20 minutes uh, for your questions. So please enter them uh, during the presentation at any time. Now let's get started. We are joined today, as I said, by Dr. Ian Holloman. He's from Red Tail Wellness. Um, you may remember he, he has made presentations before and they've always been extremely uh, enjoyable and informative. So please welcome Dr. Ian Holloman. Okay, hopefully I'm un am, am I unmute and am I, am I live? We still good? You're good. Okay, wonderful. So, oh, there I am. Um, well, hello, everyone. I hope you guys are having a great Monday. Uh, I'm super excited to be presenting today. Last, um, last, oh gosh, yeah, a year ago, right? We were talking about regenerative medicine, and we were talking about knees, and a lot of this kind of exciting stuff, stuff that's happening. Um, but now we're living in kind of a new day and age. And actually, we've picked up a new piece of equipment called the Knee on Track. We're going to be highlighting that today. Um, it's called Knee Decompression. Um, but just to share a little bit about me, who I am, um, this is me. I am uh, uh, Dr. Ian Holloman. I've been a doctor of chiropractic since uh, 2008 and in clinical practice here in Boulder. And not only that, I kind of was um, not satisfied necessarily with my doctor of chiropractic. I went on and did a lot of uh, biochemical training after that. I uh, got my master's of science in human nutrition and functional medicine. Um, I got my certification in functional medicine um, through the Institute for Functional Medicine. And I've actually also kind of gone off into uh, internal medicine. So um, I've been blessed to work with, I guess, thousands now of people in the Boulder area. And uh, we work um, more explicitly with chronic and complex conditions. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love working on the, the skier who comes off the slopes and is all banged up. We've all been there. Um, but the conditions that I tend to focus on are things that have been going on for six months to a year and longer. And usually where people have kind of been to one person, you know, the acupuncturist, the chiropractor, the physical therapist, uh, the orthopod, and they're still trying to figure out, well, how do I actually fix this problem? So uh, knees have been one of those areas um, that I have kind of dived into and I've worked with a lot of different cases as far as that goes. And so there's a real big spectrum of that. And just so everyone knows, um, We'll be talking about kind of my offer here at the end of the day. So if you guys can hang through this presentation, you guys will get a special offer um, that will be a little bit more of a discount, actually a lot more of a discount than what we normally do with the general public if you just actually call in. So that'll be worthwhile for you guys kind of hanging in there as we go through this presentation. So what I'm going to talk about again is knee pain, the different kinds of knee pain, how knee pain is managed, how it's affecting your life. We're gonna do a real live demonstration on this knee on track device, okay? And um, basically from there, we're going to then um, talk about, okay, well, how can we actually start to give you guys relief? Then hopefully there'll be some questions um, we can answer at the end and maybe you guys, you know, don't feel, you know, don't feel shy, ask the question because someone else I guarantee you is going to want to ask the question. So I would normally at this point, you know, have anyone raise their hand who has knee pain, but of course I can't really do that, but I'm assuming somebody out there has got some knee pain. <laughs> Al raised his hand. That's awesome, Al. Um, I mean, that's not awesome, so we need to help you. No, so uh, very, very common statistically, you know, knee pain is going to be felt as well as uh, uh, back pain. Uh, upwards of 80 to 90% of our population is going to experience significant issues with their knees through our lifetime, and the question is, well, what is that knee pain? Where is it coming from? 
And then what is the appropriate treatment to that? Is it, um, you know, is it taking ibuprofen and forgetting about it? Or is it going and getting a massage? Or is it getting an arthroscopic surgery? You know, how are we actually going to approach this condition? Well, from an alternative perspective, we want to look at this again in a holistic manner, meaning you've got the foot bone connected to the knee bone connected to the hip bone. So what I mean by that is that there's something called a neurokinetic chain. And as you move and as you walk, you magnify stresses into that knee if you're not actually using your proper biomechanics, meaning kind of how things move in your body, meaning above and below that knee joint. And we'll talk about that more, but it's really important because many times I find that knee problems actually start in either the spine, where those nerves come from, or they actually will start in the foot. So keep in mind when you work with someone, make sure they're looking at the, the, the big picture here. The big picture is what's really, really important, okay? So let's talk just a little bit about the most common types here. I'm gonna actually just flip this around um, and I'm gonna, there we go. So back into to, to me, right? Oh, here we go. So. Um, you guys may or may not be familiar with some very common types of knee pain, but I'm curious if anyone out there knows the most common type of knee pain. And Al, I'm not sure if I can actually see if people are um, um, going to be able to kind of put in their, their answers, but I'm curious if people can give me a guess of what they think the most common form of knee pain is that's out there. Um, I'm, I'm assuming if I go into the q and A, I I can see that. Um, so anyways, hopefully that'll, that'll come up here. But actually the, the most common uh, tendonitis, but there it is. So um, from Steve, you are absolutely correct. So the number one cause of knee pain is patellar tendonitis. Okay, now that can present in a couple different ways, but usually it's gonna be beneath, underneath the actual patella, that knee bone, right? That floating knee bone in the middle. Um, and as we keep using our knee with activity, it's gonna kind of get worse and worse. So a lot of time the presentation is as we are using it, then either the next day or the next uh, an hour, two hours later, you'll start to actually um, um, get pain. So Elaine says meniscus, not, not, yes, it's actually not meniscus. That's not the most common form of knee pain, but it's a very common type of knee pain. And it's just, that actually displays in a different way. I would put meniscus in the top five of the most common knee pain presentations that I see in my practice. So we got uh, patellar tendonitis, which by the way, is one of the more easy way, uh, things to actually treat that we actually see in the practice. Um, there is meniscus. Now, one of the keys to meniscus injuries is if we start to see swelling and or popping, locking, or significant pain that seems to be a little bit deeper than actually on the outside of the knee. Um, that's a kind of a, a, a giveaway that there really might be something internal going on. As well, if this has been a long-standing injury um, and a lot of wear and tear, there's a higher chance that there's going to be a meniscus injury. And there actually are things you can do about meniscus injuries. You don't have to have arthroscopic surgery. Um, it really depends on the presentation, the scenario. A lot of times that where, that's where diagnostics come in. Um, if, for example, MRI. You know, x-rays will not show you what's really going on with that meniscus. It'll show you the joint space, but not what's really actually going on with the meniscus itself. So we got patellar tendonitis, okay, meniscus. Another one that's very, very common is going to be, it's called patellofemoral syndrome or chondromalacia patella, CMP. Whew, that's a lot, right? So chondromalacia patella or patellofemoral syndrome. And really that's a tracking disorder. What I mean by tracking is that your knee, ta-da, there's your knee, right? That's not your knee, but it's a knee, right? Is going to go, this patella is going to go up and down as that knee flexes, okay? So if it starts to go to the side, all right, and you start getting a roughening in that surface, that's chondromalacia patella. And the patellofemoral uh, syndrome is really more or less, that's what happens before you get the actual damage to the patella. And again, that's going to be, it can cause swelling, can cause joint pain, um, especially with knee bending. You're going to see more pain with that, okay? 
Now, that's another very common position. Again, that is something that we easily, easily handle in the office, okay? And I say easily, I mean, it can take some time, but uh, most people respond really well to what we do in the office, especially that neon track device. So there's the, there's, uh, that's actually three that we've talked about, okay? Now, muscle strains are also super, super common, right? So again, we push ourselves, we're weekend warriors, we're trying to kick butt, we're, we're out there in the garden, uh, we're, you know, we're lifting up the trees, um, we're helping Johnny move his, his uh, sofa, and then it got stuck as it was going up the stairs. <laughs> and so basically, that pushing yourself too hard causing a muscle strain, okay? Of course, you can get a ligament, sprain and a muscle strain, but it's very common to see actual injuries to those muscles. And sometimes they don't recover very well. And then actually that can go on and start to create a tracking disorder, another problem. Um, and that's another issue by itself. That's fortunately one of the easiest things that actually can be addressed, typically from neurologic perspectives, meaning getting the muscles to fire back into the regular and normal pattern is going to how you actually address most of those muscle strains. You know, we used to say there's this rice model, rest, ice, compression, elevation. It's kind of gone out of vogue now. Um, that's not really so much how uh, orthopedics are actually handled now. Um, typically, if there is inflammation, of course, you can use things like ice. But if you start going beyond a week of icing, actually, the research is showing that you're going to actually do yourself more harm than good because you actually start to dull the um, information that's coming from that knee to your spine and then to your up to your brain. So um, the, the whole rice thing is it's, it's a more or less a little bit out actually at this point. Uh, what's more important is actually neurologically getting those muscles to fire. We do that through a technique in the office called trigenics. I'm not going to really go into that heavily, but that's a neurologic technique that lengthens or strengthens muscles to turn those muscles back on. So it's really a, I mean, we're talking about very, very fast, rapid results, getting off the table, and usually most people will notice a change. Um, there's other techniques out there that are kind of similar to that. Um, so that's the first four of five. Now, what have we not talked about? Hmm. We haven't talked about arthritis. So arthritis is probably gonna be the most common thing as we're over 60 years old that's gonna be provoking and causing knee pain. And that is gonna be one of the most common things that we see in the office. Now, <clears throat> there's two ways of looking at this, okay? One, what causes it? And two, you know, what stage of arthritis are you in? And do you really need something like a total knee replacement, okay? Because that's what's going to happen. You guys have heard the whole term, bone on bone, right? Well, that literally physically means that you actually have two joint surfaces touching each other. I can tell you definitively in my practice, I have seen one case of bone on bone and I have seen thousands of knees. What is actually typically happening here is people are being told their knees are bone on bone to increase the chances that they're going to follow through with the recommendations from the practitioner. And if you're in pain, if you're suffering, if your knees don't bend, kind of important, it's gonna be much more convincing that you really are bone on bone. Or if you see an x-ray, it's gonna seem like it's very convincing. But you know what? We actually have technology now that can physically actually increase that joint space. And we're gonna get into it very quick. That's called the knee on track. But so we do have that degenerative process called arthritis, the wear and tear process where eventually we start to form these bone spurs, we start to get in inflammation, and we actually also then start to um, uh, change how that knee actually moves and the fluid inside that knee, which then actually starts to cause more joint pain. As the knee moves less, right, motion is lotion. And as you start to move the knee less, what's gonna happen? Well, there's these things called nociceptors, and nociception means the ability to detect pain. So if you don't move your knee as much, what's gonna happen, guys? More pain, right? As they say, gain and pain, right? So we need that gain of movement to reduce the actual signaling of pain. It's amazing what our brain really does. A huge part of what our brain does is it actually decreases what we're actually feeling. Um, like for example, for the gut, with how much stuff happens in the gut when we're eating food, if you felt actually the actual 
the, the physical changes that would actually happen in your pain, you wouldn't be able to actually even get up, let alone you'd be thriving on the ground wanting painkillers. So what's important is to take a step back and actually ask, well, why did the arthritis happen? Because if we want to treat your arthritis, how are we going to actually also keep you from having to continue to deal with more arthritis? Well, then I would actually ask one more question. Does anyone know the number one cause of arthritis? Right now, the number one cause of arthritis in our country. Anyone want to throw out an answer? It's okay. Be brave. It's not age. That's a really good. That's a, so yeah, the age is correlated to arthritis, but arthritis is a process. It's an actual, but, oh, I heard it. Food and then diet. Yes, 100%. It's inflammation, right? So we have this thing called inflammation where, you know, it's like you'll see those pictures and the, there's flames around, you know, the, the, the part that hurts. Well, that fluid that's inside this knee joint is happy fluid or it's not so happy fluid. And what is going to keep the fluid happy? It's if you regulate your inflammation correctly. Now, what's the number one thing that would cause increased inflammation? And this is in America, okay? Now, okay, I'll give you guys another hint. What's one of the most, um, the top things that's a risk factor for a, a comorbidity? Ah, Sandra's killing it right now. Uh, so the number one thing that's a comorbidity that we're finding with COVID is obesity, right? So when you actually have what we call insulin resistance or blood sugar handling dis disorder, you will actually start to create more inflammatory chemicals. Well, that inflammation is all over your entire body. So you actually start to wear your parts down faster. It's kind of like you start losing that lubrication, right? The, the oil is no longer there on the actual moving parts. And so you start to break that down because of course you need your knees. You gotta, you gotta use your body on a daily basis. Now, I would say very closely to that is the actual obesity itself is gonna start to increase that wear and tear. And then of course, yes, normal wear and tear will increase arthritis. But if you guys really want to holistically look at your knees and start to actually, or any actually part in your, in your body, um, you need to look at where the root cause is coming from. You know, there, about five years ago, there was a research article that was published. There was a, it was, it, it blew my mind. I was at a school and I read this paper and it said, uh, I don't know what this percentage was, but it was a very high percentage of people with chronic back pain actually have infections. They actually have infections in their spine. And when I read that, it really changed my whole perspective in how I actually manage care. Because I had to start asking the question, could someone have Lyme disease? Absolutely. Could someone have an infection in their gut? Absolutely. I have seen after treating people's um, um, gut that their pain levels go dramatically down. Because what you guys should be asking yourself is, is it just knee pain or do you guys hurt all over your body? And if you're hurting all over, if you wake up and you've got joint pain all over your body, I don't know if it's just a knee pain issue. I think we might have a bigger problem going on here. And we need to actually talk about that. And that's why we want to do a good comprehensive intake with you. Because of course I want someone to feel good for I mean, after the first session, when they walk out of here, especially with this amazing neon track device that we're going to talk about. But keep in mind, always think about that root cause and how you're going to maintain the results if you're going to invest time and money into it. That's really, really important. Okay, so let's go back um, into our screen share here. This is one of the highlights I want to talk with you guys about the um, knee on track. I'm gonna do a little demo video on this just to show you what this device is. And then from there, we're gonna actually go do a physical live demonstration with it. This um, is part typically of our um, trial that we do in the office when we're working with chronic knee pain. And we're actually trying to see what different therapies people respond to, how we're gonna actually build a treatment plan. And, and very, very importantly, can I actually help you? That's always a good question to ask. Is, is this really my job to be dealing with this or should I be sending you somewhere else to get help with this? So let's take a listen here and, and actually I'll give you an idea of what our neon track device is really doing. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what that device looks like. And then we'll actually do a live demonstration, okay? Oh, let's go back. The knee on track system is a non-invasive therapy that offers a revolutionary solution for those that suffer chronic knee pain. 
The knee on track isolates the knee and offers safe and effective mechanical traction to decrease pain, rehydrate tissues, increase range of motion, and speed up the healing process. There it is. All right. Cool. So what is the traditional way of how we're actually managing knee pain? Well, <clears throat> I can tell you what basically what happens is you uh, make an appointment with your doctor, they go in, um, they uh, do an exam, uh, maybe just a primary care um, and or maybe it is an orthopedic at that point if you're that advanced. <clears throat> but you're going to go in, they're going to do an exam, they're going to actually give you an idea of what's going on. Most of the time I find that the physical exam portion is a lot of time is lacking. <clears throat> what I mean by that is doing a good neurologic exam, good range of motion, what restrictions are, do you have, looking at your biomechanics, um, looking at the orthopedic tests, these challenge tests. Um, most of the time they go straight to an MRI or an x-ray. <clears throat> and then from there, it's like, okay, well, we have options. What can we do? Well, we know that one of those options is painkillers. <clears throat> well, they have not been getting a very good rap recently. Um, and for good reason, because we have a lot of people unfortunately addicted to them and we have an epidemic um, of people dealing with these problems. And I don't know if you guys have saw recently, uh, there's a really good um, uh, uh, Netflix documentary on this called um, uh, The Pharmacist. Really fascinating if you guys want to you know, learn more about this, but it, it really is all over. And it's not just black America or white America or Latino America. This is actually impacting every single person out there. <clears throat> and, and of course the, the, the poor uh, are disproportionately affected. So in here, we've got different medications. And of course we always have side effects potentially of those medications. They, they can be obviously habit forming. We can start to have bigger problems. We can need more medications to manage the medications like constipation. Um, and of course, my favorite, of course, of here, guys, is the decreased sex drive. So, um, but no, that's not really a good thing um, to have some of these things happening. And again, it's not necessarily looking at that root cause issue. Now, next slide, I think, is going to be a little bit graphic. So if anyone's squeamish, we're going to, we're going to look, look at actually what a, a knee replacement looks like. Um, <clears throat> so there is always, of course, something called a cost of surgery. And sometimes we, we always think about that as the dollars in this. But <clears throat> actually, the average knee replacement, total knee replacement, or a TKR, is about $55,000. Now, again, if you're, if you're Medicare, okay, that can be covered. I get it. I mean, I have, I have, I have, I have had some clients who've gotten bilateral knee replacement surgeries, and it's like, it blows my mind that people are willing to put themselves through such intense um, procedures and then um, have to go through that much rehab. So we're talking usually three to six months of rehab. 50%, um, so half of knee replacement surgeries will actually need a revision after that initial surgery, okay? Um, and so then we also have to calculate the cost of lost time, our function, pain, suffering, needing those medications. So there's a lot of things to go into that, you know, the, the physical therapy that you're gonna need after the fact. And so the question always is, is do we have to get that knee replacement surgery? Here's another quick fun fact. Uh, let's just say you were driving down to uh, DIA Probably not right now, but <laughs> say if you guys were going to actually get on an airplane right now, okay? And you saw a sign getting into DIA, and that sign said, one in 400 planes will crash and burn, and everyone on board will die. Now, the reason I say that is not because I'm morbid and I have a problem. The reason I say that is because one in 400 people who get a total knee replacement will die within six months of having that procedure. So that is an absolutely true statistic, but it's not usually, it's kind of glossed over a little bit because it's just so common that people get knee replacement surgeries. And I will not go on record and say that it's not ever necessary, but we always want to exhaust our different things first. And then if absolutely necessary, then maybe you pursue that with the orthopedic surgeon, okay? Then also very, very common, not sure if anyone here has done cortisone injections. Um, cortisone injections are uh, kind of an, a mixed bag they could be uh, incredibly potent and they can definitely um, completely eliminate pain. But of course, once you eliminate that pain, it doesn't mean that the problem is gone. In fact, a lot of people will get themselves into bigger problems once the knee pain is gone because your knee is trying to tell your brain something here, is, is, which is pay attention to me, okay? So the thing behind cortisone injections is the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons has come out with position papers saying that two injections per joint per lifetime 
is now the standard. And the reasons why are because, well, there, there are a lot. I list some of the big side effects here, osteoporosis, you can get significant bone loss. Um, cataracts are a common issue that come with that. I have had clients who've actually had significant blood sugar problems for, for up, it was up to, I actually had a lady six months after she actually was still struggling with blood sugar problems after her cortisone injection. And of course, suppressed the ability to fight infections. So um, in certain circumstances, okay, yes, maybe, um, but I think most of the time we actually don't have to use these cortisone injections. And then of course, like I was saying with medications, well, just recently in 2019, the FDA came out and they actually strengthened their warnings against taking chronic non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs. Now, what's an NSAID? Well, just go to your medicine cabinet and go in there, check and see what it is. Tylenol, ibuprofen. Ibuprofen actually had one of the highest ratings for correlation to heart attacks. So the more frequent you use it, and the higher doses that you use it all correlate with this now new uh, information that's just, just come out on uh, both stroke and heart attack risk. So again, you know, popping the pill, um, it's, it's sometimes going to be kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul as far as a strategy. And I get it. Like I've been in pain. I've popped the pills before. I'm, I'm a chiropractor and I could admit that. Um, some, you know, sometimes you get in that situation, but the, the, if it's a chronic problem that's been going on for longer than three months, which is the definition of a chronic problem, you really have to start asking the question, what is going on here? Okay. So it is demonstration time, folks. I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to grab my computer right now. We're going to walk over into my, uh, therapy space. We have the lovely Mark with us and he's going to, um, do a little demo. And uh, we're gonna talk about this knee on track device. So let's get this guy set up. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do a demo here. Uh, we're gonna stop the share. Here we are again, here I am back in my lovely office. So I got Mark right here. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Mark just do a simple knee bend for us. So Mark, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna have you do a knee bend, but if you feel any pain or discomfort, I'm gonna have you just stop at that spot, okay? and then come on back up and then we're gonna get you set up on the device here, okay? About, about there, okay. And then what knee would be the knee that usually bothers you? Left side, good. Go ahead and grab a seat right here. So we're gonna get Mark set up. Wanna bring that through? Thank you. There you go. <clears throat> so what we're doing here is we're gonna actually use decompression to actually help Mark's knee, okay? So what are you like in your 20s, 30s? <laughs> yeah. So Mark is our typical patient. He's in his 20s or 30s, right? And you know, he's going, hey, look, I want to keep doing what? What do you like doing? CrossFit. CrossFit. Mark likes to do CrossFit. I love it. <laughs> I didn't even know you did CrossFit. That's awesome. Yeah. So Mark wants to keep lifting weights, right? And so what we're going to do is we're now going to isolate the actual knee. We've got above and below. And we've got basically this device right here, which is just actually, it's a blood pressure cuff. So Mark, if it starts to feel painful, just let me know, okay? So you should do about 10 pumps, eight, nine, 10. So if it starts to move, then I need to put more air in this as well, okay? It's really tight. A little tight? Yeah. I'm gonna go a little bit looser. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> I appreciate it. So now I've got this guy down here. I can have different settings. It goes from 12 pounds to 25 pounds, all right? And we're basically gonna be able to set it at a level where it's gonna to start to actually physically traction and pull apart that knee, all right? So um, we're gonna go ahead and check our settings. Just double check, it's at 12 pounds. And then it's gonna be a little bit hard to see this, but you should physically actually see the knee is getting stretched here. Is that hold pretty tight right here? Okay, good. So we got him on 12 pounds, he probably could do more. Um, again, it goes up to 25 pounds, but what physically is happening is as this knee is being stretched, it's a better way, as we're actually increasing the size of that joint space, there's gonna be fluid that comes back into the joint space. So more fluid means more cushion. More cushion means better range of motion, you're gonna actually have better fluid in there that's decreasing the inflammation and you're gonna have more mobility and more mobility means decreased pain, okay? Uh, this thing, I, I mean, besides regenerative medicine, I have seen more consistent pain relief from this device than anything else on there. I'm, I, 
our cold laser is really good. We have a device called the Shockwave. We do something in the, in the office called Trigenix. Um, this thing is just still blows me away at how good and how effective it is at decreasing those, those, these, um, these issues. So I'm gonna switch back. This is a six minute um, procedure. We're gonna switch back and we're gonna actually go into a couple testimonials. And let's see if we can hear Shirley's testimonial. Go ahead. All right, so like I said, the first thing is kind of how you were when we first started. And, uh, it is the middle of July now, and I noticed after the first of the year, I was having lots of knee pain in an area I'd never had pain, right in here. And I also realized that standing up and sitting down were very, very difficult. I would have to be sure I was sitting in a chair that had arms, and I would gradually, gradually, oh, that was then. But I'd have to do the same thing sitting down. It was just, it just in incremental stages trying to get down. Then I noticed the other knee started doing it too. And um, that's when I, in May, I would live with that until May, May and uh, then I realized I needed to get help. Excellent. So then <clears throat> what did we do? And we started after May, we, we started with this and when did we start with this? First part of mid June, right? Uh, yeah, this is my fifth week uh, starting this. I came in three times a week and I did my at home therapy in addition. Right. And I noticed the second day a tremendous improvement. And this is me now getting up and getting down. That's wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I know you were having troubles. You were having to push out of your chair. Oh, so. Well, it was the point where <clears throat> do I really want to get out of my chair and get the iced tea or can I wait until my husband walks through the room and maybe he will get it for me? I literally had to plan the rising and sitting down around my pain. I think a lot of people would relate to that. I know I have in the past. So <clears throat> obviously it's worked quite well for you. What would you recommend it? Oh, yes. I'm 71 years old and I became so terribly concerned thinking if I'm this bad now, what is going to happen down the road? And I thought, you know, I still hope to have a long life, longer life, but I want quality life and I wasn't having it. Definitely. So quality of life would obviously be better at this point, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. So you still think at this point, I know they were recommending knee surgery or in knee replacements. We think we're avoiding that at this point? I would never do that after what we have accomplished here. <clears throat> That's fantastic. Wonderful. And I don't, I'm going to show your knee real fast here. With the knee, it's actually a lot less swollen in this region than it was when we started too. There's a lot less inflammation in there. But that was almost immediate too. Yes, it was. That's fantastic. Awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. All right. <clears throat> We've got another one right here. And. Okay. This is pretty well, quick. I was damaged in a skiing accident 18 years ago and I've sought uh, I've had surgery and I've had regular re re rehab and uh, nothing has given me relief until I've started this decompression and it's uh, given me my quality of life back and I'm able to walk correctly and I'm able to exercise uh, like I haven't been before and I'm losing weight uh, uh, and it's just been wonderful. I, I can recommend it for people that have bad knees. Uh, I'm also doing the back decompression that is helping me immensely too. And one more, uh, the next, oops, let's go to the next slide here. Um, this testimonial, just so you guys know, is um, we actually did, this was after eight sessions. We did two sessions per week for four weeks. 
Um, we were definitely not done with her knee at that point, but we were kind of so excited about her progress with um, just how swollen her knee was when she first actually came into the practice that um, we wanted to get her testimonial kind of midway through her care. Hi, my name is Judy and um, I've been coming to Red Tail for about a month now because I have arthritis in one of my knees and uh, it was beginning to hurt pretty much all the time when I walked and so I uh, signed up to have Dr. Sam work with me on the knee with their various kinds of exercises and uh, uh, movements and it was uh, uh, now, uh, it's been, um, uh, uh, let's see, about, I said four weeks, I think, uh, that I've been working on it, and I think it's progressed quite a lot. Uh, I don't always have pain-free days, but uh, there's been a lot of progress, and I feel the knee is much uh, stronger, as well as the muscles in my legs. Awesome. How bad was your pain when you first came in? Well, on a scale, a scale of one to 10, I think I called it eight. Mm -hmm. Awesome, and where is it at now that we finished? Oh, it's probably about five. That's perfect, great, anything else? All right, so um, let's go back here. Let's switch to, ta -da. here he is. Okay, so I'm gonna take Mark off, and let's get this guy off. Mark, let's have you come on back here. We're just gonna do another little demo. And let's just have you, same thing, just go down as far as you can go. Okay. How's that feeling now? Feels great. <laughs> How did that feel, Mark, when you were actually, you know, getting the, the uh, therapy it, done? It felt really, really great. And it's also extremely gentle, which I appreciate. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, there it is. So um, Mark's done some, some therapy with us before. And um, I'm gonna, I've got a couple more slides to go through with you guys, and then we're going to wrap up and do some Q&A. So I am going to switch again. Okay. So hopefully we've got some good questions. If you guys have been thinking about things, we can actually you know, get answered for you guys with this. Um, Probably one of the most common questions that I get, there's actually probably two most common questions that I get is one, um, does insurance cover this? And then two, obviously how much is it uh, for these sessions? Well, one, um, right now I can say that Medicare definitely does not cover knee decompression. It is relatively considered a, a new therapy. So they are not actually actively reimbursing on that. Um, my apologies, that's just, of course, sometimes how that goes. But fortunately, it's not a um, arm and a leg. Actually, it's their $35 a session. I always do an initial examination, complete neurologic um, and musculoskeletal and orthopedic examination before I, we even do anything because I never wanna jump into therapy until I feel confident that it's actually gonna help. So with that being said, um, Normally our new patient uh, visit is um, $125 and that includes, again, that complete orthopedic neurologic evaluation. We are going to want to look at your back. We are going to want to actually, and I'll just, I'll just actually switch this just for one more second. And I'm going to show you guys right here. So this is an important diagram because we actually talk about how your hip issues can actually also start to cause knee issues. And I had talked about, I just briefly talked about this, but what's important here is that, I'm actually gonna get back in here. If you guys have been familiar with something called sciatica, well, your sciatic nerve, right, which comes from your uh, lumbar spine is gonna actually dive down and it's gonna be part of the innervation or nerve flow that's gonna actually activate your knee. So basically on the front of your knee, it is your fifth lumbar nerve root. Back of the knee it is your first sacral nerve root or S1. L5 and S1 are both part of your sciatic nerve. But what's important is if you have muscle weakness and it's coming from here, again, you can just focus in on this, but if you don't actually take care of that at the same time, it's going to be a problem. And that's why you saw in the testimonial that, that, that there's a guy who was doing that back on track or spinal decompression at the same time. Because based on my exam, I can tell you really quickly if part of your knee issues or foot problems or hip issues are actually coming from your back. So um, something to think about, something to keep in mind when you're actually looking at uh, the, the big picture here. So anyways, back to this. 
Uh, we do, of course, do a free trial of the NEON track um, during that initial evaluation. Um, there is some simple paperwork that we have people fill out that it actually is all done online. We send you a link. Um, it takes you less than an hour for sure, maybe 30 minutes to fill that paperwork out at most, I think. Um, and then that comes back to us. We're ready to go when you come in. You have shorts on, preferably a loose uh, uh, shirt as well, so we can actually have access to your uh, knees and uh, lower legs because you don't want to actually be able to expect that we're going to have you move around. And then, of course, at the end of that, I will do a case review, my report of findings, basically give you my recommendations. Do I think that I can help you? Uh, what is really going on here with your knees? If you have x-rays, if you have MRIs, please bring them. I'd be thrilled to actually look at them. That's not a problem whatsoever. And that will help me guide what I think your care would look like and what my expectations are for you improving, okay? So again, um, that's a pretty good deal here. I think that, that we uh, are giving the our, our aging at, at altitude um, consumers. So $47, so you guys can take advantage of that. Uh, we have uh, my staff here on um, <clears throat> ready for those phone calls. If you guys want to call, call in and get scheduled, we usually be, uh, we usually book about an hour of time for that. Um, and then we'll just go from there. So beyond that, this is some contact information. Uh, our phone number 303-882-8447. Um, there is a link right there if you guys want to grab that link. Um, that is actually if you want to pay for that, um, just right online and then actually call and book your appointment. But 303-882-8447. If you want to email me um, uh, some questions, hey, is this right for me? You can do that as well. Um, that's not a problem. But I'll actually say leave you guys with this right here. Sometimes um, we get into situations, and recently I was actually driving down the road, and um, this light came on. And I thought, uh oh, well, I'm about 20 miles from my house. I think I can probably make it. And so the light's there, and you know, and I'm obviously rolling the dice here. And uh, 15 miles towards my house, um, the light starts to uh, blink. And I go, huh, well, it's blinking now. Okay, well, it's only 15 miles left. Okay, you know, so 10 miles, about 10 miles left, um, it starts to blink and it's starting to actually make sounds. And I'm going, oh, this is, I got this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this. I can make it home. I know I can. It's a pretty, pretty new car. Um, you know, it, it's got a warranty. I can do this. There's no, nothing, nothing could be wrong here, right? Well, you know, about a mile from my house, the smoke starts to come out of the engine. And you know, at that point, I realized this is a good analogy to talk to people about when their body has their check engine light turning on. And you know what? That's pain. That's lack of mobility. That's going up and down stairs and feeling those knees. That's taking those pain pills and making the pain go away and thinking that your problem is actually gone. But we both know the problem's not gone. So the question I have to you is that why do you want to have relief? And these are my whys right here. I got four whys, right? I just had Father's Day yesterday. Had the most incredible day with these guys. You know what we did? We played tag. <laughs> Guess what? I had to have my knees for tag. And my seven-year-old boy is like, he's, I think he's one year away from actually being able to, to run me down. Uh, but we just had a blast. on the, we, we went and played tag twice, actually, yesterday, because that's what they wanted to do. And I was like, I'm here for you guys. So I want you guys to be here and present for your grandkids. I want you to be able to present, present for yourself, for your, for your spouse. I want you to enjoy everything that Boulder County has to offer here. So if you guys feel compelled, please give us a call. We want to take care of you. Let's go ahead. Um, let's, let's grab some questions here. And uh, let's see what we got. Um, questions. Our prior, oof, I've had chronic knee pain since replacement in 2005. Um, it interferes with my ability to exercise. Anything that can be done. I've tried injections, PT massage, topicals. Okay, so, so just so you guys understand, if you've had a total knee replacement, and, and Emily, if you've had a total knee replacement, uh, the knee on track is, a, is what we call contraindicated. I would not use the knee on track device for you, okay? But, Fortunately, we have a lot of other things. We have something called a Lumix 250. It's the world's strongest cold laser device. That's an amazing tool right there. I have, I mentioned something at the beginning of the presentation, which is called trigenics. It's a neurologic technique 
which actually helps to reconnect the brain to the muscles surrounding the joint. Again, the most common kind of knee pain is actually muscular induced knee pain. So if your knee is not balanced and your knee is not firing appropriately with those muscles, okay, then what's going to happen? Well, you're going to start, you're going to continue to experience knee pain, even though you've had a knee replacement. All right. So uh, anonymous here says, should I do these treatments before getting more shots? Now, again, I don't know what that means as far as shots go. Like cortisone. Ah, so if we're talking about cortisone shots, um, what I tell my clients is that, um, you know, you can do this in conjunction with that, but usually what I try to do is, is I'll try to do it before uh, someone goes and actually does those cortisone injections. Um, so it's up to them on, on how they want to approach that. But, it, you know, roughly it, it takes about six weeks for a cortisone injection to kind of work itself through um, a, a major joint. Um, there are other things out there that, again, as far as from an injection perspective, that I have a much, much better track record, less risk factors, including PRP, uh, stem cells. There's lots of other stuff out there that I think that you can do instead. Um, does the knee on track device help a meniscus tear? It does depend on the kind of tear. So if we're talking partial tear, 100% absolutely, okay? If it is a um, full tear, probably not the actual thing that I would want to use. Um, at that point, if we're talking about full tear, you know, more than likely we need to actually evaluate you and see if you're a candidate for regenerative medicine. Uh, Linda, can you use a knee on track on someone with a torn meniscus? Okay, so same thing. So same question there. Um, and how long do you need to wait in between sessions if you need multiple? So usually what in, in general, uh, most cases we're doing um, two sessions a week with clients um, on the knee on track. Sometimes severe cases, we might do three or four sessions a week. It kind of depends on the, um, on the person and what they actually really truly need. Um, again, for us in the office, it's a, we do that knee bend before, get that trial done, do a knee bend after, and then I just say, how's it feel? Walk on it, you know, and, and over 90% of our clients will actually notice a difference right away. Um, another very common question I get is, well, how long does it last? Well, of course, it depends on the severity, depends on what's really going on here, but I will see people um, upwards of a week after just one session actually see relief. And then as you actually compound that with actually multiple sessions, you'll actually start to see improvements from there. Again, it all depends on the case and the scenarios that go with that case. Um, what We've else? I can I can ask some some questions as well. Sure. Um, Please. Uh, so so t uh, can you talk a, a, a little bit about the compression sleeves that we hear and see so much about? Okay. Uh, Tommy right. Copper is a popular one. Some even have cold and, and hot therapy associated with them. Yep. Yep. Um, What's your thoughts on those? Uh, there, for mild conditions, including things like your average sprain. Um, you're going to actually see some relief from that. And part of that is because you're actually controlling the swelling and the inflammation around the area um, rather than actually, you know, doing anything else besides letting your body kind of go through its natural healing process. Um, some people swear by them. Other people, you know, most of the time I don't get a ton of good feedback, but I also see some pretty challenging cases in my practice. So, you know, there is a little bit of research out there on those things. Um, not a ton. Um, if anything, if I was going to say device wise, uh, we use something in the office called a, a PMF or pulse magnetic frequency therapy. There are actual uh, mobile ones. They're a little bit more expensive. They can get a kind of in the five hundred thousand dollar range um, that are can actually physically attach onto those areas, um, and they're pretty they're pretty good actually as far as for a device. Uh, but you know when we're talking about like physical like the very big hinged braces, that's more or less like there's a severe internal problem going on. Yeah, that's an indication to use those. Um, otherwise, sometimes I I find a lot they're more or less kind of like uh, ego boosters if, if we're out there kind of getting it on the weekends and uh, you know playing soccer and we're 45 years old. Uh, it, sometimes it just feels good to have that compression around your knee and, and just start playing. So what about, what about decompression? Um, so like inversion tables, which are pretty popular for back problems. Um, uh, does the inversion table actually do the same thing for the knee since they're all connected? Right, no. Um, it's not so that the, the difference with the knee on track is going to be very isolated to the knee itself. It's the same thing with our um, spinal decompression device. You're talking just about um, poundage that is magnified when you are looking at an actual physical device that's designed to target that individual area. Otherwise, you know, um, I, I'm not against uh, traction uh, tables. Um, actually, um, I am an advocate for home based traction, especially for the neck. You know, we got text neck, we've got uh, people that drive all the time. We've got 
you know, you're tired after doing a Zoom webinar. Um, there's actually really good devices out there that, um, for the, the neck itself, which are relatively tame because you can get yourself in trouble <laughs> if, if you're too aggressive with traction or if you start too fast. So you talked about infl inflammation. Um, what are what would if you if you said these are the five foods that you should avoid that will cause inflammation in your body? What are they? All right, right on. Now we're talking my jam here. Um, so number one, sticky buns. I mean, if you're going to avoid anything, it's going to be your high glycemic index foods. That's going to actually be one of the most common things that's going to actually spur insulin resistance. A very common thing that people don't actually realize is that rancid fats or trans fats, okay, are gonna be also incredibly pro-inflammatory. So we wanna watch out for those. And just to take a step back, actually even more so, I mean, you can put it in its own separate category, but just talking about the sugar thing, um, high fructose corn syrup. What people actually don't know is that the, when they make high fructose corn syrup, um, they actually will use mercury to make that, that chemical. And so, oh, you know, high fructose corn syrup, it's not that big of a deal. No, 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 it, it's, it's legit, actually, how that chemical disrupts our, our inner physiology. And it's obviously, it's not just blood sugar. It, it's, it's a lot of other stuff. So we got sticky buns, right? We got basically like our hydrogenated oils, things that make things last on the shelf a lot longer. So our packaged foods. Um, three, I think what's actually something that maybe we don't get in a lot is just really good water. So having that fluid in on a regular basis is a big deal that if you're going to do that, it's, it's potentially going to cause problems. Um, another one that we don't think about is, um, you know, again, it's, it's barbecue season, right? So if you're going to really hit that piece of meat with that heavy, heavy char, that black char, okay, that actually, that, those are cancer forming compounds. But it's just not, it's not just what's in the gut. Again, you have to, you're absorbing all that and it's going in different areas. I, I'm actually a, more of an advocate of kind of a paleo Mediterranean style diet. Okay. So I don't tell people don't eat animal protein. I'm not, I'm not a vegetarian by any mean, but what I mean is that how you actually treat that protein is going to be either anti-inflammatory or pro inflammatory, right? It's, there's very few neutral things. Um, water being a, a neutral thing. So we got four, what would be a five? Um, I, just, I mean, there's so many things in there that really is going to actually contribute. Uh, fried foods. Well, I mean, yes. Yeah. So, so the thing is with fried foods is um, that reaction. And the same thing goes with like, so for example, you look at bread, the, the brown crust around bread is something called a Maillard or Maillard reaction. The same reaction happens with fried foods. So when you superheat um, a protein and a carbohydrate at the same time, it forms this really, really um, kind of just gross molecule that your body has to detoxify. And again, that, that inflammation of detoxifying that compound is going to create inflammation. Your inflammation is going to go all over your body and it's going to cause more wear and tear. So I, I would put that right up there on the list. It's not that you can't actually have some of these foods once in a while. It's not that you can't have some variability and some flexibility. Um, but you know, I tell my clients, hey, look, if we've got a metabolic belly going on, if you've got a weight problem going on, well, that's going to compound your knee problem as well. So something to think about. We've got a few questions from the group here. What about nightshades? Nightshades. So uh, fascinating thing. Uh, we work with a lot of uh, autoimmunity in our practice. Um, you know, things like thyroid disorders, um, rheumatoid arthritis, et cetera. And there is definitely a correlation um, between tomatoes and potatoes and peppers and eggplants and all those wonderful foods that are coming into season now um, and inflammation. But that's not, that's not everyone. I, I think that um, if there is something called leaky gut going on, which is one way how we bring more inflammation into our body, um, then there's more likely to be a problem with those nightshades. But again, part of this goes back to, is it just a high glycemic index potato? And that's what's actually really causing problem or is that the actual lectins which are what we get from as part of the, a protein that's actually found na naturally in nightshades, if that's causing a problem as well. So something to kind of discuss, and, and that's something that you, know, you can always do as an experiment is pull some of those foods out and see if you actually notice improved um, uh, joint inflammation. And I have one about, uh, about non-cortisone knee injections. Um, can, a uh, can you talk about non-cortisone knee injections? And then also, do bad knees then affect other joints like the hip? Well, 100%. Um, as they taught us in school, the knee bone is connected to the hip bone. And so it all starts from somewhere. 
Um, more often, knees, because actually they're a very simple joint. Um, it's flexion and extension. I mean, they, that's really the majority of what the knee is doing. If you look at the ankle, if you look at the, the foot, there's 35 bones in that foot. I mean, it's, it's incredibly complex. And so how you actually walk and or run is more relevant than typically the knee itself addressing the brain. Of course, unless you've had an injury. Um, same thing goes with the spine. I see a lot of spine related problems, excess sitting, that start to actually cause a problem in the hip, which then starts to cause tightness and that actually starts to cause pain. I mean, again, you have uh, muscles from your hip that go directly to your knee. This is, a, for example, your TFL or tensa fascia lata, which then ties into something called your ITB or iliotibial band. And a lot of us have heard of this whole ITB. So um, yes, looking at those it has to be done at the same time. Otherwise I will have found in my own practice that people's issues come back and in my own issues too, I go, well, you know what, I've got this, this knee thing. And I'm like, you know what, I need to actually check my arch out in my foot. Cause that's been one of my problems is if my arch starts to drop too much and it's, and I'm not strengthening it, I'll actually start to get more of that uh, patellar tendonitis pain. So that's a very common cause there. Uh, what else did, did I miss anything? Yeah, there was a, there was another question. I think you've already answered it, but, but it's worth answering again is somebody who has a partially torn meniscus is the, knee tracking device um, effective? Yeah, so um, it's going to be effective, but it's going to be potentially limited. And what I mean by that is it really depends on, is it a flap tear? Is it a full thickness tear? Is it a, if it's a partial tear, I, I'm, I'm going to probably go whole hog with you and we're going to actually go ahead and, and we're going to pursue that. Um, <clears throat> most meniscus tears, guys, just so you are aware, come from internal rotation derangements, meaning you actually, your knees internally rotating too much which also means you're pronating too much with your feet. So, they, you know, of course you could come from a, a, a ski injury or something that happened in the past that happens, but most meniscus problems are actually, again, not a knee problem. They're coming from another actual thing. So you, you gotta figure that, that issue out. And if you can figure that out, absolutely, I would use a knee on track. Um, and most of the time I'm gonna do a trial and we're gonna see if someone actually sees a, an improvement right after the session anyways. But, but again, that I probably wouldn't, use, that wouldn't be the only thing that I would do. I, I'm just, just to be honest with everyone out here, I'm not just going to use a, uh, the, the knee on track to fix a meniscus problem. It is definitely more of an advanced issue at that point. And what about the non, the question about non-cortisone uh, injections? In right. There's a lot of different ones out there. Um, probably the most common one is either Synvisc or um, uh, there's also Rooster's Comb. It's a, it's a hyaluronic acid derivative. Um, it's more or less kind of just a, we're going to get a little bit of relief for a while um, injection. And, and it is covered typically by a lot of insurances, uh, anywhere from two to, to four injections. But I, I, I find it's just kind of a Band-Aid. It's going to just kind of push things down the road, kick, kick the can down the road. Um, I am a big, big fan of uh, platelet-rich plasma, which is PRP, and then also regenerative medicine. Now, that there's a lot of different, there's, I mean, that's a whole other hour, guys, of, of, of regenerative medicine, because there's, you can get it from yourself, you can actually buy the product, there's different ways to do it in your body, we don't have time to go into it, um, but physically doing things actively before you, again, for me, the last, um, and, and thankfully, again, that we have access to it, but the last thing really actually should be the surgery. But once you go under the knife, um, there is a good chance that you, you're not going backwards. And, and meaning that they take tissue out, they replace something. Um, it may work out fantastic for you, but I'm always um, conservative first. And then we see if we have to go down that path. And um, what about, what about uh, some of the topical gels? You know, Baltarin just, be, just came back onto the market as a, mm -hmm. as a uh, for, for under a non-prescription cream. Um, sure. How, sure. how do you feel about those in terms of just helping to reduce pain for people who have chronic pain? I mean, you know, there's an old saying, um, uh, rub and hope, pop and pray. Um, and I, 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 I have nothing against any topical, um, but I can just tell you that the majority of people that I see the topical is just, is not cutting it for them. So there's nothing wrong with CBDs topically. Sometimes they work good. Nothing wrong with CBDs, you know, taking them orally, but to take them and assume that the problem is, dealt with is a different is that that's an attitude that's going to get you in trouble because when the pain goes away and you continue to play you're going to continue to actually create damage and trauma on that knee so i i think you want to look at that root cause first and then at the same time why not incorporate a knee uh, pain cream or, or you know some supplementation to help you with the, the pain as well 
Do you do other treatments um, like massage and things like that at your, at your practice? So, so yes, um, 100%. I mean, again, I'm a chiropractor. I do chiropractic adjustments. I, 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 I will absolutely do that. We do a lot of muscle work with, with our clients. Uh, we're doing we do cold laser. I have a device in here that's called a shockwave, uh, which is actually, it physically breaks up scar tissue. Uh, it's a fantastic device. You know, again, we've got the neon track. Uh, we have pulse magnetic frequency. I've got all these different toys and it just, it always kind of comes down to what's the presentation, what makes the most sense. What's the budget really too for someone? Um, and what are they looking to kind of spend on this? And then let's be realistic with what we think our expectations are going to be for you. And somebody would like you to put your slide up, your contact slide again. So be, that could be the last thing since it's one o'clock, you can put your contact slide up. And uh, I, will, I will thank everyone for, um, thank you, first of all, uh, Dr. Holloman, uh, outstanding presentation, and thank everyone for joining us today. I'd like to remind everybody that if they would go to dailycamera.com backslash aging, you can actually visit our expo and see all of our partners and who's, who's, uh, who's been part of it. If you've been part of our live expo before, you'll know that, that that's very informative. So I encourage everybody to do that. And with that, um, I will say thank you again, Dr. Holloman, and wish you all a wonderful afternoon. Have a great day.